I recently received a question from a student that asked about how to add balloon callouts to a drawing file. So I figured I would go ahead and blog that entire process in this video so that way you all would see start to finish how to incorporate the numbering or lettering convention, how to generate a bill of material, and then finally how to apply those balloon callouts to your drawing. To begin this process, the first thing that you want to have created is your product or assembly file, which I have here on the screen. In order to create a balloon generation for your drawing, you need to set up your bill of material, and part of that bill of material is to actually call out the lettering or numbering convention scheme that you would like to use. To begin with my product open, I'm going to find this icon called Generate Numbering. It is in the product structure toolbar within the assembly design workbench. When you click on that, click on your product, it's going to ask you if you want it to be integer or letter based. For me, I always like the letter based approach better, so I'm going to click on that and then click OK. Next, we're going to establish the bill of materials. This is done in the analyze portion in the menus across the top of the screen and then the first one should be bill of material. So when you click on the bill of material, you can customize for the bill of material to show certain things. What I'm really concerned about here is I want it to show my part numbers and then the quantity, so how many of each one that I have. Now a part of that bill of material chart which will eventually be on my drawing, I also want to see you know, is this supposed to be balloon letter A or D or whatever it may be. So in order to see that in the drawing, I need to add that number scheme inside of the bill material chart. To add that, you're going to come down to define formats in the corner. You're going to click on number, which is currently a hidden property, and you're going to send it over to a displayed property. In addition, I would like the number column to display first, so I'm going to highlight that and then hit the change order. Click the top item and that will force the number column to be displayed first. So when I click OK, you can see how it does show as number, quantity, and then part number. Clicking OK is what's going to create that bill of material so that way we can later use it in the drawing. And the next step is to create the drawing, or if the drawing is already created, go in and activate that drawing. I do not have a drawing created, so let me go ahead and just quickly make this from scratch. I'm going to select a new drawing. I'm going to use the ASME standard, and C is the sheet size. Right, from here, I'm going to call out all of my balloon generation with an isometric view. For the isometric view, you do have to select on a flat surface, and that flat surface needs to be from the actual assembly. So using the window tab, I'm gonna switch back to the product screen. Please remember to adjust the way that you want your isometric view to look first, and then click on any flat surface of your model. Once you click on that flat surface, it generates the isometric view and click off in space to generate the drawing view. So on this drawing view, I would like to have those balloons created to call out those different part files. Now over here to the side is where I'm going to have my bill of material chart, which corresponds to the letters, and then we'll drop in the balloons on this actual screen. You do have two different options in order to drop in the bill of material chart. The first option is to add this to what we call the sheet background method. Typically the sheet background is where you also place your frame and title block. The way that you get to the sheet background is you're going to come up to edit and down to sheet background. From here you can come up to insert, drawing, bill of material, and then bill of material. Once you have that clicked on, it's waiting for you to select the actual Katia product. So when you get here, you might have to switch back to the product screen and click on the top level product from the specification tree. Now you are going to click where you would like the chart to be placed. And if we zoom into our bill of material, you can see it's listing the top level product. And then we have our three columns, the number, quantity, and part number. Uh, you're also seeing what's called the recapitulation, which is an information that's stored in the bill of material. 
If you do not want this chart to show up, you can simply delete it out of the screen. So using this method does place this chart, which you can pick up and move, but it is existing in the sheet background. If you go to edit and working view, this is now moving back to that primary layer that we use on the drawing to place our views and dimensions and annotations, etc. So now if I want to pick this uh, chart up and move it, notice it won't let you because it was placed in that sheet background instead of the working view. So just be careful with this first method. If you do want to pick this up and move it, you have to switch back to the sheet background. So with this method, you can still come in and place these different balloons and the balloon callouts on the screen. To find that icon, you can find a toolbar which is called Generation. This generation toolbar has a third button in the flyout called Generate Balloons. If you click on that, that will immediately pop up with the balloons associated with this bill of material that was placed in the sheet background. Now the only thing that I have noticed that Katia doesn't do very well is it doesn't always choose the optimal location. You might need to uh, take the time to rearrange this physical location. Uh, if you click on an individual balloon, you can just click and drag with the left click of your mouse to adjust its location. And then down here where you see the little yellow diamond, that is the pointer mating spot to that item. So you can just pick that up and move it around. So again, any time that you want to move this, just take the time to individually relocate them on your screen. And then you would do that with all of the remaining balloons as well, making sure that right they fall inside of the drawing frame and they point to a location that's pretty clear to see. So this is the first method with the sheet background. The second method is to use a slightly different approach. So to show you this, I'm actually going to create a brand new sheet on this sheet. I do not want the two charts created in the sheet background, so I'm going to go into the sheet background and I'm going to delete these out. Switching back to the working views, let's create another quick isometric view. Switching back to the product to click on a flat surface, clicking off in space to generate the view, and now let's drop in the chart with our second process. This process does not require us to go into the sheet background. You simply come up to insert, down to generation, bill of material, and then finally bill of material. You then click on the spot on your screen where you would like for those charts to be placed. Once again, you're gonna get the bill of material and then the recapitulation. If you do not want the recapitulation chart, you can simply delete it out, pick this up and move it. However, I do want to point out to you that by doing it in the way that I did, I did create it so that way the chart is attached to this active view. So if the active view were to move, then the chart location, as you can see, is moving along with it. And then sometimes people don't want this, so they don't want the chart to be tied to this active view. So let me show you a trick in order to achieve that. If this is currently the active view, we need to somehow deactivate it. If you double click on the sheet, right now notice that the isometric view, which was previously red, indicating that it was the active view, um, it also had a blue box around it. Notice that that's gone, right? And it's been replaced with the blue dash border, meaning it's not the active view. So by double clicking on the sheet within the drawing, you tell the drawing to not have any particular view active. From here, you can then do the same thing. We can do insert, generation, bill of material, and then bill of material. From here, you will have to switch back to the product long enough to click on the product from the tree, and then click where you would like to place the chart. And then again, deleting out the recapitulation. If the chart is a little too small for you, you can click on the chart and adjust the chart size. And this is in the text properties toolbar. After you do make that adjustment, you might want to double click on the chart to make it wider. And adjusting the location of the chart and also the location of your view. And finally, you can add the balloons. 
Now the balloons do have to be added onto an active view, so I'll double click to reactivate the isometric view. And then again in the generation toolbar you can click on generate balloons and they will be dropped onto the screen. Again, if you need to relocate a couple of them, click on it, readjust that connection point. Also, if you click on a balloon, you can also adjust its size here from the text properties toolbar to increase or decrease the overall size. But doing it with this little trick means that if I pick this up and move it, notice that the chart, the bill of material does not move along with it.